working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single and in this episode I'm going to show the fitting of the whistle valve followed by trying some alum powder to remove a broken tap in one of the brass parts that fits in the smoke box. This is the fitting of the whistle valve. On this 5 inch gauge model there is a turret fitted to the boiler which is quite unlike the prototype but very functional if you want to drive it with large hands while sat right behind the tender. This turret is designed to have three valves fitted to it. Two of the valves are going to be used as injector steam valves and the third valve is for the blower. So where am I going to put the whistle? Well, on the end of the turret there is a blanking plug. So I've removed the blanking plug and I'm using one of these. This is a PM Research cast elbow fitting. PM Research are an American manufacturing company. I buy these in England from Forest Classics. The address is on screen. And the first thing I have to do is slightly re-thread them because the standards for quarter by 40 are slightly different between the UK and the USA. This very small bit of extra work is not an issue. Thankfully I don't have to do thousands of them, but when you look at this on the valve, it really looks like the assembly belongs on a steam engine. Over now to the lathe, I'm turning down a piece of brass to a quarter of an inch in diameter. I'm going to make a very simple thread adapter. One end fits into the elbow and will be loctited in place, and the other part screws into the end of the turret. According to my micrometer, it's nearly there, so I'll just take a very, very fine cut all the way down, and then all I have to do is thread the piece of brass. This morning I got a comment from a viewer. The viewer is obviously a beginner, and he was asking, can you be more specific as to what a clack valve is and various other terminologies like wet header? The main problem is that if I make a specific video all about what these things are and why they're called that, well, I've already done it in other videos. Maybe not a wet header. Okay, I'll give him that one. I try and be as specific as possible, and the videos that I make are quite detailed. So I suppose the best thing to do, really, is just watch some more of my videos. As of the 3rd of May 2018, there are currently just under 1,000 videos on the channel, and most of them cover steam-related topics. Right, back to work. In this clip, I'm using my tailstock die holder to cut the thread on this piece of brass. Now, I've just made all these thread adapters, as I showed in a previous video, so if you don't know about those, please watch the video. So why am I using this? Well, I already had three tailstock die holders, so it seemed logical to put a quarter by 40 in one of them, and 5 sixteenths by 32 in another one, and a 3 eighths by 32 die in the larger one of the three die holders. Initially, I started off by threading this by hand, but I soon got fed up of that, so I put the lathe into back gear, which slows it right down. Then I could cut the thread using the power of the lathe. When making thread adapters, it's a good idea to drill a hole down the middle. Now, don't laugh, and I'm not being sarcastic. I know that's a rare thing, but I've actually made thread adapters in the past, and they've been really nice. The threads have been beautiful, but I've forgotten to drill the hole down the middle. So OK, you can retrospectively drill the hole down the middle, but it means holding the part by the threads in the lathe. And if the threads are brass, they're going to be very weak. Or you could make up an adapter and waste loads of time. So all I'm really saying is make sure that you drill the hole in the middle of the thread adapter before parting it off. So here is the finished elbow adapter. The hexagon part really belongs to the steam valve. I decided to permanently lock this in place and then I can put the steam valve onto that part of it. So now I can fit this finished elbow adapter to the engine, but I need to take some parts into the house because that's where the engine is, and this small plastic drawer has what I need. It's got a lot of copper washers and a lot of shim washers. It's just a general box of quarter by 40 bits and pieces. And now armed with various tools and some Loctite 542, I'm in the house fitting this part to the end of the turret. The first part of the job is to test fit the elbow in position on the turret to see what kind of a shim washer it needs. And the good news is it doesn't need a shim washer. Now this is pure luck. So now my excitement has reached fever pitch. Without further ado, I'm going to apply some Loctite 542 to the thread and I'm going to screw the elbow in place on the turret. There is a very strange anomaly when I shoot these videos. If the camera wasn't on, I would have just held this elbow up against the turret and screwed it in place, but when the camera's running, it dithers about and it doesn't line up, and it takes a while, but finally the thread engages and off we go. And as you can see, 
it's a perfect fit. Just a bit of a nip with the spanner and it's ready to accept the whistle valve mechanism. I'm applying some more Loctite 542 to the thread that goes into the whistle valve. Now it's time to screw the body of the whistle valve in place on the end of the elbow, not forgetting to fit the push rod, the stainless steel ball and the spring first. I know that this is going to line up because the brass part that goes into the elbow was lined up when I fitted the elbow to the valve in the first place. And that's about it for this part of the job. And I really like the look of the whistle valve. It fits in very well with the existing three valves on the turret. I bought this small gas appliance via eBay a while back. And why did I buy it? Because I thought it would be useful for steaming vertical boilers. But so far I haven't used it for that. So what am I doing at the moment? I'm putting a pan of water on top of the gas burner. It's a really good gas burner, it boiled the water in no time. And now I'm adding the alum powder. This stuff is called Fatakdi powder. I've put the spelling on the screen and it's also known as alum powder. I'd never heard of this before. John at the steam workshop told me about it and said that it was very good at removing steel parts from non-ferrous metals. So I'm really hoping that it's going to remove this small piece of broken tap from one of the holes in the chimney mounting. I read the directions on the packet and it contains all sorts of things. It may contain nuts and other things like that. And I went on to read its application. It's for keeping vegetables crisp. It's some sort of a pickling compound. So I assume that it's non-poisonous. What the plan is, is to boil it up like this and then leave it overnight or maybe for a couple of days or maybe a week until it dissolves the tap. When I mentioned this Fatakdi powder, in a previous video, a viewer wrote in, and he explained that the word Fatakdi means hot girl. I don't know whether this was a wind-up or not, because my knowledge of the Indian language is not good. The only comment I can make on this is that I suppose if I tipped this pan of boiling Fatakdi powder onto a girl, she would indeed become hot very quickly. I decided to add a 4BA bolt to the mix and held it over the pan, which was pretty stupid because I became very hot very quickly. So more sensibly, using a pair of forceps, I deposited the 4BA bolt into the liquid. And I couldn't help but think that if I left this 4BA bolt in the mixture for long enough, maybe it would become a 5BA bolt. And then finally, I put a water gauge fitting into the pan. I don't think much is going to happen here because this is a brass water gauge fitting and there's no ferrous metal in it at all. I boiled this mixture up for about 10 or 15 minutes and then I turned the heat off and disconnected the gas canister and now it's the next day but I haven't been in the workshop yet. I'll have a look and see what's going on when I go in the workshop later today. I'll leave you with the boiling mixture. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.